What is happening everyone, it is your boy Brad here, welcome along to the channel, welcome along to this very special video, I was supposed to do this video, I was going to do this video a few days ago but just didn't get round to it. So, where are we at with Arsenal at the moment? Well, I'll tell you where we're at, we're 10th in the league and um, we're not in Europe next season, it's as simple as that. Out the Europa League thanks to a loss against Villarreal, 2-1 overall on aggregate, 0-0 on the night. On Thursday, played tonight against West Brom. Pointless game, to be honest. But, obviously I'll be spotting the lads to get a win. But, just want the season to end. It's as simple as that. But the reason why I'm doing this video and I'm touching up on a subject that's been rumbling on for weeks and weeks and weeks. And that is that um, the co-founder founder of Spotify, Swedish billionaire Daniel Ek, is preparing to uh, buy Arsenal Football Club. And rumour has it that he's preparing a bid for this week. Let's hope that is true. <laughs> because I just want change. I just want change at my club. And um, I just hope that we get it. Because it's just um, it's just a mess at the moment, Arsenal. We're 10th in the league. We're um, out of Europe altogether next season. It's just not it's just not good enough. It's just not acceptable for a team of Arsenal's stature to be out of Europe completely for the first time in like over 20 seasons. And it's a wonder Arsene Wenger isn't looking at this now and thinking, what the fuck is happening with my with my former club? It's mad. It is absolutely mad. And I'm telling you, we, as fans, we want change. We want change. And I hear that there is going to be Another protest at the Emirates tonight. Another um, anti Stan Kroenke um, protest, which will be peaceful, as um, our protests have been. And I hope, and I hope that Daniel Ek, he said himself that he is committed to buying the club and he has got the significant funds to. Um, attempt to buy Arsenal off the uh, Kronkies who came out within so many days of Daniel Ek getting it together and he's also got a consortium of three Arsenal legends Thierry Henry, Patrick Vieira and Dennis Bergkamp backing him up on this bid and it's all down to what happens in terms of the meetings with the Kronkies and whether they are willing to um, accept the bid that um, Daniel Ek puts forward and that is a rumoured 1.8 billion that he's starting off with I mean 1.8 billion Jesus that is mental 1.8 billion but we'll see what happens in the coming um, the coming weeks because it isn't going to be one of these deals that's just going to get done just like that it is going to take time Thierry Henry even mentioned it himself he said when he confirmed that he is in with Daniel Ek to um, try and buy Arsenal. He said it's not going to take... He says it's going to take time. It's not going to be one of these deals that just gets done just like that. And I just hope that they do end up selling up because for me now, he's not going to get that prize money, that sweet, sweet European prize money next season for getting into Europe. Is Stan Kroenke, that's all he cares about. He doesn't care about anything else. He doesn't care about who we play, when we play, or anything like that. And um, <laughs> All he cares about is uh, funding his American franchises, the LA Rams and uh, whoever else he owns over there in America. And I just hope that we do get Daniel Ek. And I hope he does. Yeah. I just hope that um, we do end up with um, 
Daniel Ek as the owner, like most Arsenal fans want, because they want Kroenke to sell up. But obviously the Kroenkes came out within days of this Daniel Ek rumour coming out saying they're not going to entertain any offers or sell up their stake. But they should. For me, they should. Because they don't care about Arsenal. They don't care about the fans. They don't care about what anyone wants. They just care about lining their pockets. That's why they went into the Super League. That is exactly why they went into the Super League. To line their pockets with money every year. And I mean, the uh, the English clubs and plus the other teams that pulled out of the original idea have all accepted the UEFA um, punishments and such now and are committed to UEFA and UEFA competitions. But there are three teams remaining that aren't in that bracket, and that is Real Madrid, Juventus and Barcelona, so they will su- um, suffer significant punishments from UEFA and such, and probably bans and such or whatever. But, like I said, that is exactly why Stan Kroenke went straight for it, to line his pockets with 300 to £400 million pound a season. <laughs> it's mental. It is absolutely mental how many, how much these uh, founding clubs were going to get. It's mental, absolutely mental. And Florentino Perez must be sat there right now thinking, what the fuck have I done? But he doesn't care. There's no one. Most of the owners of these clubs don't care about the club. They they run. And that's exactly what I'm on, on to now. In terms of um, Stan Kroenke, because he does not care about Arsenal, he doesn't care about the club, he doesn't care about the fans, he doesn't care about the history. All he wants to do is um, take every penny out of the club and see us fail. It's as simple as that. And we want an owner that is willing to put the fans' ideas forward and involve the fans within um, certain things like transfers, etc. And that's exactly what Daniel Ek has promised. If he does become the owner, but it's like I said, this thing is not going to take um, a day or so to wrap up. It's going to be one of these long processes where you got to wait. But let's just hope and pray that it does get done. And we see Daniel Ek as the owner. That's what I want to see anyway. And most Arsenal fans across the country and across the world, that's exactly what they want to see. They want to see a new owner, they want to see change I mean it's the same with the manager situation as well, I don't know how you can back this process anymore, it is done, it is dead, I mean basically the Cronkies have just accepted a yes man, basically he's come from City good background because um, he's been under Pep and they thought he was going to be the next coming, the new coming of Pep Guardiola. Nah. He's tried the Pep Guardiola tactics like the false nine, etc. Don't work. Substitutes are too late. The slow, lethargic, sideways, backwards build-up play is a theme at Arsenal. And it needs to change. We need football that is beautiful. We want to see beautiful football at Arsenal like we did. Back in the glory days. And I know everyone keeps bringing up the glory days and all that of Highbury. But they're the best times. They're the best times as an Arsenal fan. I remember seeing Highbury shot. And I watched the last game of the season. I was crying. I was crying at the fact that it was the end of an era. And we were moving to the Emirates. And then Ivan Gazidis and all them coming out saying, Oh, we're going to be an elite club and compete with the likes of Bayern Munich. That made me laugh because when we were playing, some of the football we were playing under Arsene Wenger, some of it was absolutely gold. Some of it was absolutely beautiful. Then we go under Emery, and to be honest, Unai Emery got sat for less than what Mikel Arteta has done now. I mean, he finished so many points away from top four. But next season, he didn't do so well, so he was undoubtedly sacked and he lost the dressing room so then Arteta comes in we finish 8th in his, in his first well say first season he came in um, late didn't he he came in late and um, we finished 8th and the FA Cup saved his job 
Now, we're finishing... I don't, I don't think we're finishing any higher than ninth. We're not finishing any higher than ninth. And we're out of the Europe, Europa League. We've got knocked out in the semi-final. And we're out of Europe altogether next season. That could be a blessing in disguise. It could actually be a blessing in disguise that we're out of Europe altogether. But I'm disgusted. The season has been utterly disgusting. I mean, I was looking at the table. We've lost 13 games this season. And we've conceded over 30, 35 goals. I mean, the falling grace of this team has just been utterly shambolic. And we need change from top to bottom. Slash out the whole thing. Get rid of it all. All these yes men, get rid of them. Get rid of San Kroenke. Get rid of Josh Kroenke. Get rid of Vinay. Get rid of Edu. Get rid of Arteta. Get rid of half the squad because they don't... They're not fit to wear the shirt. The badge is too heavy for them. Half this squad need to be slashed and we need new players. Players that want to play for the badge. Players that want to play for the club. And we need an owner that is willing to take us forward. We need a manager that's willing to take us back to where we belong. But we're not getting that. We're not getting that at the moment. It's mad. It's mad. I was going to say mantle. It's mental and it's mad how this club has fallen so drastically. We used to complain about Wenger finishing fourth every year. We're finishing fucking mid-table now. This is what Arsenal has become. Jokes. Danielek, please, please, please save our club, please. And bring in a manager that will actually get us competing again. Because I am sick to death of seeing the same old shit every single season. Hearing the same old crap. I'm hearing it again. Oh, I'm going to be backed in the summer. Backed in the summer. Yeah, Mikel. You shouldn't even be here. The process is dead. Trust the process, they said. I trusted it, I backed it, and now I'm at my wit's end. I'm done. Season's dead. Process is dead. I just want change. Simple as that. And that is where I'm going to end the video because I'm literally going to fume for the rest of this video. So guys, if you do like the video, you know what to do by now. And of course, I'll be back tomorrow with the reaction and player ratings for the game tonight against West Brom. 7 o'clock kickoff if you wanted to know. BT Sport. Until next time, we'll see you later.